Now let's start off with our first big story. Obesity is known to be a serious health challenge alien to Africans, but now obesity or overweight depends on which you choose is increasing among African and indeed Nigerian. Mm. Mike, it's not just an issue affecting adults alone. Children, Children. that's mm. the much, you know, a, a more worrisome one. Uh, um, juvenile obesity mm. is on the rise. If you go to uh, Luth, for example, I've had the experience of going there only to see so many children. What's the problem? They're all down with diabetes, mm. uh, you know, type 2 diabetes and all of that. It is a very serious problem, but we have uh, with us in the studio uh, this morning, Isheyi Olushore Adams. Well, before we go into that, let's uh, see this report on obesity. These are a few descriptions of a not slim lady in Africa. According to the World Health Organization, more than one third of African women are estimated to be overweight. The World Health Organization predicts that it will rise to 41% in the next 10 years. The past two decades have seen a dramatic increase in obesity in Sub-Saharan Africa. Despite this growing problem, Many sub-Saharan Africans do not find the region's increasing waistline to be of concern. Actually, I like something that I can hold on to. At least a nice figure, big stuff from hard days, job. can hold on to something and play with it. How fun, you know? The big sized ones. The ones we call big machines. Rather, being big is seen as an index of affluence or power and overweight is something that is beautiful and attractive. In the global community, Latino, Asian and Caucasian women could give up everything to be or remain thin. Could it be that African women seem to be less distressed about carrying few extra pounds? No. I think I'm cool the way I am. Are you kidding me? Why would I want to do that? No, I really don't. I actually want to lose more weight if I can. Are the African men comfortable with overweight women? I would like somebody that is way between. The might up being a uh, mission impossible. That one I didn't want. I prefer a slim woman who is smart and will be able to carry herself without any stress. Africans normally like uh, chubby women, women with flesh. Due to global social changes, most African women are becoming more aware of all the dangers involved in being overweight and have become more conscious of the importance of exercises and healthy living. You know, there's something about discussing weight issues. Yeah. It, it either makes you really laugh or makes you really, <laughs> really sad and depressed and it actually is one of the major fallouts of being obese, depression. Yeah. Uh, uh, in all of this, when you, when you narrow it down to issue of how men relate to women sometimes. You mean Nigerian men? Nigerian men ah, or maybe African men. That. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is said that Africans or Nigerians like them big. How did you describe it earlier? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh my. All right, uh, we have in the studio Sheyi Olushare, Shadam yeah. certified health and wellness expert. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been behind one of the wellness uh, uh, live shows on TV mm -hmm. sometime. It's good to have you join us this good morning. It's been you. a pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, there is the issue of being obese and being overweight. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a difference or is the semantics of just using different names for the same thing? Okay, according to um, international standard, mm. you know, to be able to distinguish if you are obese or, or overweight or normal or underweight, that's what we call the body mass index. Mm -hmm. Now the body mass index, it's an actual way to ascertain if you, are, if you fall into any of these categories. Now how do you measure that? It's a measure of your mass, that's your weight, divided by your height. So right now, to know if you're obese or underweight or normal or underweight, you just take a measurement of your weight 
and your height in meters, then you divide it. So if you're below 18, okay. you're underweight. If you're between 18.5 mm. and 24.9, you're normal. All right, let's get it um, you know, even clearer. Let's take a lady, for example, a Nigerian, typical Nigerian lady, 5'6 okay. or 5'8. Okay. Uh, what really should be her ideal weight? Well, um, ideal weight should be about 60, between 60 and 70. Oh my. Yeah. Okay. Now, there was oh, a research. <laughs> there was a research on um, a woman who lost her life based mm. on the fact that she was obese. She was weighing at about 108 kg. Wow. And she was in her 60s. She was about 5 inch feet tall. Then by the time, you know, she knew she was obese, so mm. she gave herself up for a test. Mm. So by the time the surgeon was trying to cut through her skin, it was tough. And wow. you could see the thick layer of oil mm. in her skin. So that's to let you know that one of the reasons why people are obese is what they eat. It could be natural, mm -hmm. but trust me, we've had people who have, you know, turned their lifestyle around just because they decided to take an active measure to just, you know, live a healthy lifestyle. Look, let, let's even start by defining exactly what we mean by obesity. I'm okay. not sure that some people okay. are satisfied yet. Okay. Let, let's right. define it because some have described it as a, a silent killer. Yeah, it is. It's a silent killer, it breaks home, it causes depression, mm -hmm. you know, it has to do with self-esteem issue. Now, in, in a layman's language, term, language mm. when you're obese, it means you're consuming more calories than you expend. Mm. That means you eat more than you exercise. If your physical activity does not commensurate with what you um, take into your system, mm. then that means you're, you stand a higher risk of being obese. You eat late at night, you don't work out, you sit down most of the time in front of your computer, you don't, you know, involve yourself in physical, physical activity. activities, you're not burning calories, you're not pumping your heart. You know, your heart rate is supposed to be beating fast, you're going to be hmm. pump it, make it pump more blood and make it active so that you can sweat inside of you mm -hmm. and also, you know, aerate the sweat pores. But if you're not doing that, you accumulate fat, you, uh, you eat junks, pastries, Go and junk is all around yes. us now. So your system is getting clogged up. Your intestines are getting clogged, clogged up. They're not able to process, they're not able to digest your food. Your bowels are not moving properly. So all these things accumulate. And with time, you get tired. You're not able to sweat. Mm. You're, 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 you're slow. Slow in the sense that you can process information very well. And you know it just slows your mechanism down. So that's where you stand at the risk of being obese mm. and once you like i was saying earlier if you check your bmi mm. and it's well over 30 then you're obese if it's between 25 26 and 30 you're overweight so that's okay. the difference between being overweight so and it's borderline yeah so if you're getting close to about 25 25 to 9 that should be your check like hey i'm getting to that point so mm. you need to do something about you, it. You talked about, um, you know, overeating. Yeah. Beyond overeating, are there other predisposing factors to being overweight or obese? All right. A lot of persons think it's um, genetical. A lot of persons mm. think, they think it's hereditary. But so many things can be, um, can be responsible for, mm. for such. And the known factor that I know of is basically overeating mm. and not exercising regularly. All right, let, let's get into this eating thing. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the word junk is a very common, you know, classification of the yeah. kind of food mm. that you shouldn't eat, that yeah. you eat, or maybe you eat too much as the case may be. Okay. Can you break these things down? So we get to understand word by word itemized junks that we talk about so we know okay fine this is what is responsible this is what mm -hmm. can be responsible for this okay now diet plays a very very important role no doubt in your wellness journey when it comes to weight loss and fitness diet is about 70 percent while exercise is just about 30 percent so in mm -hmm. trying to classify what is junk you know a lot of it's also called binge 
eating. Binge eating. Yes. Mm. That's because you just want to just put something in your mouth. Maybe because you're suffering from depression or maybe um, you're just restless. Now, most of Nigerians, most people, they eat because they want to just put something in their mouth. You know, and most people fall into the mistake of eating what their mouth wants, not what their bodies need. Mm. So, in terms of cooking too, what kind of oil do you use? You know, in terms of eating, what's your cholesterol level? When you go to the store, do you check the nutritional facts mm. at the label, at the back of the label, mm. to know how many calories I'm putting in my system? What's the percentage of the carbohydrate? What's the protein value mm -hmm. in what I'm eating? So if you put all of those things at the back of your mind, you're responsible for yourself. You are being accountable into what goes into your mouth. Mm -hmm. Just like garbage in, garbage out. Garbage out. You are what you eat. Yes. What you put in your system will definitely show. And the truth of the matter is, on the inside, so many things are going on. Mm. You know, digestive system, it has to go through the right process. You know, once you eat, so many processes are going inside of you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, let me, let me paint this physical, um, practical scenario. Now, when people eat late at night, take about, you eat a very, very heavy meal at about nine. Mm. Pounded yam. What do you pounded call yam. heavy? Mm. Like pounded yam, mm -hmm. eba, fufu, swallow, swallow <laughs> you know. What about, maybe what eat, about eat, rice? Because there are people rice. who think yes. rice is light. Mm. Rice, there's what we call bulgur rice. Bulgur? Bulgur rice. Okay. Bulgur rice, that's quite low in carbohydrate. Okay. Now, if you eat a cup of rice, you need at about 24 minutes of jogging to burn the calories and about 54 minutes walk to mm. burn off the calories a cup of rice mm. do you understand so if you now eat, eat a heavy cup of rice or eba or what have you at about 10 pm you realize that when you wake up in the morning you feel hungry mm. and that's because you've stressed the digestive system it has done woo -woo. <laughs> you know mm. it has not it hasn't processed the food well, what is supposed to go into the large intestine, what is supposed to go into the small intestine, mm -hmm. what is supposed to be in the colon. So it's just packing everything. So take for example, someone doing that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's stirring. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't what matter expected. if the person's uh, job is, is you know, very physically exerting. It, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because it's stress. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between stress and burning calories. Okay, so take Mike and I now, for example. We have to sit here every morning okay. for two hours straight. Okay. Seven to nine. Yeah. On the average. Yeah, exactly. Every day. All right. Are we predisposed to becoming overweight? With, or? The, with the ACs every yes. time. Yes. AC in the house, AC, AC in, the in the car, and AC okay. in the office. Trust me, you are. But there's a way to go about okay, it. Okay, please tell us. Tell. Okay. It's not every time, if your heart is not far, you can just, you know, take a walk. You know, tell maybe your drivers, say, I'm going to meet you at such a such place. You can walk mm -hmm. to your, some destination. Mm -hmm. Then you can squeeze smoothies, take fruits. Purple is a very, very good way to make your bowel movement very, very fast. Oh, okay. Okay. Pineapples. Mm. Then of course, it's like I said, it's all the, it all depends on what you eat. You know, so if you in the morning for breakfast, you can have cereal. Mm rich in fiber in the afternoon or something take watermelon watermelon is very very high and rich in potassium mm -hmm. good minerals so just like your food has to contain at least all the six classes of food then every morning try and take water because first thing first thing in the oh, morning yes. when you take mm. water water is the only drink that has no calorie mm. that's the basic truth take water drink water regularly at least eight glasses of water Okay, Whoa. now that's yeah. another, that, that's another, another matter entirely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you want to leave healthy and you don't want to yes. be obese. Uh, okay, so for, for a person who has, um, you know, uh, genetic factors that determine their weight issues, what are the things the person needs to do? First and foremost, it's always... Because if your father was fat, your mother was fat, your grandmother, yeah. you know... You just feel that you... Yeah, you yeah, feel there's nothing you family, can do about it. Uh, exactly. They say it's in our family. Well, to start with, I always tell people that um, I come across will have similar stories you know you have to know that this is what you want to do you don't have to be like them mm. you know you have to take that conscious effort, effort. 
Because obesity comes with its own diseases too. Mm. Diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. So it's not even just about you trying to work on yourself. You need to work on your system too, you know, so that you can shed the excessive the excessive calories, the excessive mm. cholesterol in your system. Mm. Yeah. Okay, of course, child obesity, uh, childhood obesity is another major factor. So let's look at um, the other angles, of course. Now, childhood obesity is a condition where excess body fat negatively affects a child's health or well-being. The World Health Organization describes childhood obesity as one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st centuries. Pediatrics obesity has increased in recent times and it is not only in economically advanced countries, but also in developing countries like Nigeria. Now, children are now exposed to the adoption of the dietary pattern of eating fast foods which are high in carbohydrate and fat. Now, a 2012 estimate by WHO reveals that about 40 million children younger than five years are overweight globally. It is estimated that 81% of the more than 40 million children that were obese globally in 2010 reside in developing countries. Hmm. The World Health Organization says the global prevalence of pediatric obesity may reach 70 million by the year 2025. Childhood obesity has more than doubled in children and quadrupled in adolescents in the past 30 years. Now that's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Hmm. Childhood obesity, that is a time bomb that is waiting uh, to explode. Yeah, how but can we? we but let, let's, it? let's even understand why mm -hmm. is it on the rise, mm -hmm. especially in developing countries. What's the what? What are the factors responsible for that? Well, um, one of the factors, the parents are involved. Okay. Of course, the media is not playing its role. You know, when we check the TV and what you see is, you know, fries and mm. junks mm. being, you know, and you know, it's gotten to a point where. Parents use most of these things to pacify their children. Their children. The child is crying. Hmm. The child is doing this. You, you give I'll him. Buy this, ice cream. You know, and you know, charity begins at home. The home is the small unit of, you know, life. What you practice in the house, it's what the child takes over there. So when, once it becomes an habit, you know, the child is already used to eating heavy, eating what he or she wants, not the right thing. So it's going to increase and trust me you know for a child who is being taunted mm. in his in school, or school mm. calling him or her fat or above the child tends to withdraw it causes another damage psychologically so it's high time this is checked parents should check what they feed their children with it's happening all right uh, you just mentioned the word you just used the word orobo now yes. in, in nigeria basically orobo means uh, the, the big one right yes. now if you go to buy chicken they said there is the yeah. you asked for the orobo exactly and the, yeah. the, does it mean we shouldn't mm -hmm. take the orobo one as a case maybe? well um for me it's always better to go for the healthy or healthier alternative mm. if at all you want to eat chicken you know you can grill it so all the oil and everything is so whether it's a robot whether it's turkey it's always good to eat what we call lean protein mm. you can get that from turkey from fish you know mm. if you're going to you know feast on protein it's better to stay away from the likes of chicken and cool. Is there a reduce. difference between the live chicken and the frozen chicken? The imported it's chicken that we hear is really not too good. If you if you switch to live chicken, is it a better For option me, it, or does it, it make it, much it really difference? It doesn't make any not difference. Much it's, difference. It's just as long as you just eat according to your proportion, the right mm. proportion. Not It doesn't have to be the whole chicken mm -hmm. before you know that you are eating. Now what, what about eating in small portions? Because I, I'm trying to practice that. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, small portions okay. yeah. each time instead yeah. of the big bowl of rice. Yeah. You just take a small. small uh, when you say cup, it's it's always good to describe it. Maybe mm. the small, um, you know, maybe half a tin yeah. of yeah. Uh, the milk tin. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. the boiled one. Yeah. A half yeah. of of that. Okay. Uh, and you have a carrot. You have your veggies yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and all the rest awesome. of that. Awesome. How many you times you can you? you how take again, yes. How many take how many times can you do the small portions of food? on a daily basis. Okay, what if I told you it's possible for you to eat up to five times daily? Huh? Mm. 
five times. You five can actually times. eat it up to five, up to five times, times as long as you're eating the right in thing. Small, small in small portions. Small 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 what what difference does it make? They all go into your system. Yes, they all go into your system because you need to understand that it's a platter. We call it a platter. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's lettuce here, mm -hmm. there's carrots here, there's spinach somewhere there. here, there's um, boiled beans somewhere here. As long as you just make it colorful. Mm. Mm. So by the time you go around, you're already filled, you're already full up and you're not mm. hungry. You know, and like I told you, the very, very good strategy, drink water before you eat because you're already full already. You have mm. that sense of You're fullness. Full of okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. we're going out on TVC Entertainment now, but viewers there can continue with TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria on Constant Channel 190 and DSTV Channel 418. And if you want to continue to be informed on this particular topic and other issues we have lined up this morning, go to GoTV45 and ACTV510. Stay with us.